Hello everyone, back to you in today's second video. We're going to have a look at the weather for the next week to 10 days, or today's second video, uh, which will take us to the 1st of May, actually, and we'll be able to extend out beyond that the extended GFS and ECM ensembles running to you around a couple of weeks. So have a look at CFSB2 at the end of the video for the next four weeks. That takes into the second half of May. And talking of May, uh, we have done the ECM GFS 30 uh, look at this today's first video update. Um, so uh, that's looking at temperature and precipitation anomalies of the UK and the rest of Europe as well for the next four weeks. It takes us into the second half of May and quite a bit of warm weather on offer with the ECM uh, with the ECM 30 day uh, forecast today across many parts of Europe. But have a look at, uh, at that and see what's going on there. And now, before I do anything else, I'm going to say a big thank you to our latest channel member for Gals Weathervid. So, uh, our fourth Gals Weathervid YouTube channel member is Jack Lowe. Uh, Jack Lowe is uh, Gals Weathervid's fourth YouTube channel member. Big thank you to Jack for becoming our fourth um, YouTube channel member. If you would like to become a channel member for Gals Weathervid, all you need to do is come to Gals Weathervid's YouTube page, uh, where you're probably watching this video now, or you may be at Gals Weathervid's com watching it but uh either way come to the gas youtube channel page uh home page and click the join button and that will take you through to another page where you can uh go through all of the things that are on offer by becoming a channel member and also you can sign up there is also the join button with the videos here at youtube um and you can't see the join button a few people on tablets are reporting that they're not able to see uh the join button so if you can't see the join button all you need to do is click the first link in the description of the videos and uh, that will take you to the uh, to the sign up page so big thank you to everybody who have become channel members so far you're each going to get your own individual uh, mention in the videos uh, i'm going to have a few more to do so uh, a big thank you to all of you who have signed up so far and uh, yeah special thank you to uh, jack colo our fourth i think it was our fourth um youtube channel member thank you so much jack for, for doing that Right, so moving on, we're going to start with the GFS upper air temperature and precipitation ensembles for the next couple of weeks. We're at Manchester today. So red line is a 30-year upper air temperature average for Manchester. And we're starting above average at the moment and quite significantly above average too. Uh, the upper air temperatures are going to start to uh, lower a little bit through to the weekend and into next week, but still overall staying on the mild of an average side. Not as warm as it is at the moment, perhaps, but certainly staying uh, above the 30-year upper air temperature average pretty much until the end of the ensemble now, actually, which takes us virtually to the end of the first week of May. By then, we're back down to around average but overall that's a pretty mild or relatively warm ensemble precipitation wise a lot of dry weather coming up over the next few days and the change to more unsettled conditions i think the gfs has started to push back back a little bit you remember in yesterday's video we spoke about how the gfs and the ecm were at odds with one another in the days seven eight nine ten time frame uh, and the GFS was one to turn things unsettled very quickly. The ECM uh, not really interested in doing that, at least not up to day 10 anyway. Uh, well, now the, uh, the GFS ensembles are pushing that change more unsettled conditions uh, a little bit further back. So now it's the 27th of April when the uh, precipitation spikes start to appear rather than around the 25th, 26th, as we were seeing uh, yesterday. And even then, on the 27th, the precipitation spikes are relatively lowly in number. It's not until virtually the middle of next week now, right at the very end of the month, um, that things start to turn uh, probably more definitively unsettled. And then that does carry on through the first week of May. So eventually, the GFS does get there, or the GFS ensembles do get there towards unsettled conditions. But has been pushed back. It is being pushed back at the moment. Well, I said maybe... A, happening uh, in yesterday's video, I think it was, that we probably would go to unsettled weather, but the GFS was being too quick in doing it, that it, that it would take a little bit longer than, uh, than the GFS was indicating. And that could be what's going on here. So it may well eventually arrive at unsettled conditions by the start of May, but it could take it could take a little bit longer than the GFS was indicating yesterday. It's definitely been a pushback um, in, uh, in those precipitation spikes on this graph. 
Temperature and anomalies on the 21st of April to 29th. A little bit milder than average. Not a big deviation, as warm as it has been through some of the weeks uh, this month. But uh, nevertheless, it still is uh, slightly above average. Not just the UK, but through many Western parts of Europe. Over on the eastern side of Europe, it does look a little bit cooler than average. A little bit cooler than average on the eastern side uh, of Europe. And actually quite cold as we extend up in towards uh, parts of uh, Western Russia in particular. Quite, quite below average. And also down towards the Black Sea and into Turkey. So the cool weather is in the east, smiler in the northwest at the moment. Precipitation anomalies from the 21st, uh, 29th of April, drier than average. The UK and much of northern Europe, southern Europe, looks a little bit wetter than average. Over in America, we've got an east-west split. So western parts of the states are on the mild average side, away from this Pacific northwestern corner up here anyway. Most uh, western parts of the states are warm than average, and particularly so over towards southern parts of California and around Nevada, those sort of areas uh, looking uh, looking really quite hot uh, there. Uh, and generally a warm than average in the west, but over on the eastern side of the states, much colder than average. Colder average temperature anomalies continue from 21st to the 29th of April. Of course, they have had a big tornado outbreak over across uh, across southern parts of the states uh, in the last couple of days. Uh, and the reason for that is these cold of an average temperature anomalies that surge, surge southwards. When you get the cold air surging out of Canada at this time of year, it will meet the warm air that's pumping up out of the Gulf of Mexico. And uh, what you get is big, big storms setting up. Uh, through these southern parts of the states. Big thunderstorms, and of course, not only thunderstorms, but also tornadoes as well, as as those two air masses, the, the cold air from, from the northern America and from, uh, and from Canada, colliding with the warm air coming out of the Gulf. Uh, it will create uh, very uh, large updrafts, and that will uh, cause tornadoes and uh, severe thunderstorms. So, uh, the tornado outbreak that they had, uh, I think it was a couple of days ago, uh, that definitely, definitively, uh, or at least partly caused by the cold air surging out of uh, northern parts of America and colliding with the, uh, with the warm air coming out of the Gulf of Mexico. Very typical for time of year. Also, I think it's going to calm down in some parts of the states in the next week, though. Um, precipitation anomalies look largely drier than average in many of these southern states, actually, in, uh, in the next week from the 21st, 29th of April. So we should see those big storms and, uh, and tornadoes easing off a little bit in the next few days. A further north varying from state to state. Some of the states are drier than average, some of them are a little bit wetter uh, than average. Going back closer to home, this Albert GFS is looking for Friday. So on Friday, we're still in a ridge of high pressure, uh, actually. It is weakening a little bit. One or two showers might spark off on Friday, but generally, you know, this will be on dry weather. And into the weekend, well, actually, pressure is weakening slightly again over the weekend. So the risk of showers breaking out could um, increase slightly over the weekend. But largely, we're still under a ridge of high pressure. There's not really much here, I don't think, to trigger rainfall over the weekend. So I suspect dry weather continues uh, through the weekend. Temperatures may start to edge down a little bit. Probably cloud builds up. Could be a few showers breaking out. But the emphasis through the weekend probably on to dry weather. Into the early part of next week, then it starts to get a bit more unsettled. So low pressure begins to drift up from the south. That could bring a band of rain uh, with it from southern parts of the country. And through next week then, it just gradually starts to turn more and more unsettled. So that by Thursday, last day of April, 30th of the month, we find ourselves then under a trough of low pressure. So it's taking longer to get to the unsettled weather. It's pushed it back. Does eventually get there by the second half next week. We're under low pressure, bringing showers or longer spells of rain. And that's how long as we get to day 10, actually, a very unsettled looking weather chart. 1st of May uh, begins with showers, if not longer spells of rain, courtesy of this area of low pressure. Do bear in mind, though, that as we're pushing back this change to unsettled weather, there has to be a little bit doubt about it. Will we ever get to it, or will it just keep getting pushed back further and further? Uh, moving out beyond day 10, well, then we start to see low pressure, or continue to see low pressure, dominating through the first week of May. So the first week of May is unsettled, and eventually the low pressure starts to break through with the Westerners uh, as well. That's a very long way out. It's as far as we go to Thursday, the 7th of May. By then, Westerners are, uh, are breaking through with further unsettled weather coming in from off the Atlantic. Going to go to Metro Seal today to uh, see the uh, see the GEM. Hasn't updated at uh, Wetter Central, unfortunately, but we can uh, catch up with it via 
Metro Seals. So uh, we began in a couple of days' time, again on a bit shallow ridge of high pressure as we come towards the end of the week. And then as we go into the weekend, uh, we start to put the high pressure out to our west a little bit. Low pressure coming down the North Sea. That's bringing, uh, bringing in a northerly wind and possibly some showers to northern and eastern parts of the country. However, high pressure is still more or less in control. Into the early part of next week, then the high pressure starts to go north. High pressure is going north in a week's time. It's coming centre from Scandinavia over towards the Norwegian Sea. Low pressure is in the North Sea. Winds are in from an east to northeasterly direction. So that is more unsettled and it's, uh, you have to say, that's probably bring, bringing some showers on the spells of rain down the eastern side of the country. This will be a snowmaker, of course, if it was winter. This would be a very uh, cold and potentially quite snowy scenario, particularly for the east and uh, for the southeast. Moving out beyond that, then we start to see low pressure becoming more influential both to our south, uh, just here across France, and to our west. It looks like the GEM is moving towards an unsettled, uh, an unsettled beginning to uh to may that's as far as we go day 10 uh which is the first of may and it does look as though the gm is gradually inching its way towards an unsettled opening to may let's have a look at the ecmwf so again we've got high pressure out to our northwest on uh friday still exerting influence across most parts of the country really into weekend high pressure keeps going gradually weakening over the weekend but i think the emphasis is still on dry weather uh through the weekend really into the early part of next week high pressure goes further north similar to what the gm is doing taking high pressure up to northern scandinavia and ridging it out into the norwegian sea low pressure developing around denmark that could bring showers onto those eastern coast and then through the second half of next week then the low pressure begins to break through both from the south and from the west so by turning it through to day 10 which is the first of may it looks like we're going into unsettled weather again. So I think actually the models have coming to line a little bit today. Uh, that split we had yesterday has been resolved somewhat, and they're kind of met in the middle, I think, actually. So it is gonna, I think it is going to turn unsettled through the course of next week. It'll happen later uh, next week. The GFS has pushed back the change to unsettled weather. The GM and the ECM have pro possibly brought it forwards a little bit. So they met somewhere in the middle and it could well be that the middle to second half of next week is where we will we'll see a definitive breakdown to unsettled conditions. Before then, I think, particularly over the weekend, where a couple of days ago, the weekend looked quite unsettled. Now, the weekend is looking uh, relatively settled. This is a precipitation type forecast from the ECM uh, via uh, tometio.com. And uh, you see, but again, it's a lot of dry weather at the moment. And as we run through these, you'll uh, be able to see that there is going to be loads and loads of dry weather coming up over the next few days. No real measurable uh, precipitation until we get into the weekend. I mean, you start to see a few showers just beginning to run down the east coast on uh, Sunday and into Monday. But still, even early next week, the emphasis is on a lot of dry weather. Eventually, though, rain begins to develop both to the west and to our south as we come in towards the middle of next week. We do start bringing some rain in from the west and from the south. So as we get up towards month's end, yes, it is starting to turn uh, a little bit more unsettled then. That's what we're going to get today, 10, bring a band of rain in from off the Atlantic then. So I think we're about around another uh, week, probably, of mainly dry weather, uh, to be honest. Um, temperatures will probably cool down a little bit over weekend, but I think the emphasis over weekend into the beginning of next week will probably be on mainly dry weather. And I would suspect that the breakdown to unsettled conditions will probably be like middle to late uh, next week. These are the options on the table within the ECM ensembles today for day 10, which is the 1st of May. And you'll see that most of the ECM ensemble members are telling things unsettled by then. So, uh, yes, this gets us to uh, 1st of May. We've got 15 members of the ECM ensembles here with below average heights to our west, to our south. They look unsettled. 15 with low pressure coming in off the Atlantic. That's going to be unsettled. 14 again with quite deep low pressure in the Atlantic. That's going to be unsettled. And 7 again with low pressure. Plus a little bit further southwards with the jet stream uh, through there. But all options really run settled by day 10. So it does look as though we are eventually, we've got good agreement actually, but we are eventually going to turn things unsettled. It's just going to take a little bit longer to do it. But by the beginning of May, nearly all of those ECM songs, or all of them, are looking unsettled. 
So an unsettled start to May is definitely favoured there. Uh, in two weeks' time, these are the options that we've got. This is to the 6th of May. Uh, then we have low pressure coming in off the Atlantic still. So still unsettled on the 6th of May with uh, these 22 uh, members of the East Ensemble 16 with high pressure just to our west southwest. So that's uh, setting things down again, soon building a ridge back up from the Azores High. And 13 with low pressure to our east and also way out in the Atlantic, possibly hinting at some higher pressure getting going through there. So that could be a little bit transitional. So any unsettled start to May. Could well uh, be quite short-lived, and as we get towards the end of the first week of May, we could be finding ourselves going back towards higher pressure again. Uh, finally, CFSV2, so these are 500 millibar heights, so they're broken down into week periods. The first week period takes us from 21st, 27th of April. The coming week is dominated by high pressure, the high pressure generally out to our north and west, so a lot of dry weather coming up. Winds are a little bit sort of east northeasterly. Perhaps a little bit on the cool side, uh, if anything. But high pressure is in control. Now, week two. This is when the CFS yesterday was uh, coming was coming into line for GFS and indicating a very unsettled week. Not so much the case today. This is 28th of April to the 4th of May. Uh, above average heights are still dominating, really, over and just to the east of the country. Low pressure is out of the Atlantic. This low pressure is probably starting to break the ridge down a little bit. But really, the emphasis there is still on main dry weather, I would have thought, particularly for southern and eastern parts of the country. Look at this, it's week three, big changes from yesterday. This is the 5th to the 11th of May. The high pressure re-exerts its influence with low pressure up to the north. So this is suggesting high and dry continues through the first half of May, which is a change on yesterday, because yesterday with the CFS, uh, May was looking quite unsettled. And even to week four, which is the 12th to the 18th of May, above average heights continue to be in control. Below average heights in the Atlantic and to our northeast, very much uh, a trough reach pattern with the flow of a jet doing something uh, like that. So I think the models have come into line, really, uh, the shorter range models anyway. And to me, it looks like the dry weather is going to carry on through the weekend and probably even into the start of next week. Although showers might start to break out as pressure weakens. I think the emphasis over the weekend into the early part of next week will be on dry weather. Temperatures probably edging down a little bit, but still pleasantly mild or warm, I would have thought. And then middle to late next week, around month's end of the beginning of May, I expect we get a more unsettled interlude. But I would be quite... Surprise if that's to last very long, and I don't think it's going to take too long before we get ourselves back towards higher pressure again. So maybe an unsettled interlude around the turn of the month, but um, probably not lasting all that long. I think the emphasis is still really on high pressure. Uh, that's how it looks like to me, anyway. We shall see how it all pans out over the next uh, few days, but I think that's what we're looking at. Uh, a little bit of an unsettling interlude around the turn of the month, and then probably back to high pressure as we go through the first week of May. But time will tell. Right, that's the videos uh, for today. Tomorrow, we're going to have the five-day forecast, always on a Wednesday, uh, five-day look ahead. And, of course, we will also have a week 10-day video update with all our regular features. Don't forget the live stream as well tomorrow between uh, 4 and 5 o'clock. It's 4 and 5 on a Wednesday, 5 and 6 on a Sunday. Between 4 and 5 o'clock, we're going to get together within the Gals Webbers community and uh, we'll see how we're all doing as we continue to all be in lockdown, we're all stuck indoors. Um, and uh, we go through this coronavirus crisis, and as I keep saying, uh, we're going to keep recording and uploading, we're going to keep bringing the content that you want to see through this crisis. Uh, and yes, we're going to do a live stream tomorrow between 4 and 5 o'clock. We're going to get together and see how we're all doing. Um, make sure everyone's okay in the Gaz Webbers community. So that's 4 to 5 tomorrow, the 4 back 5D forecast, and a week sending video update as well. Going to be a busy day tomorrow, uh, so keep checking back to all of the updates. But for today's videos, that's all for now, and thanks for watching.